Hey guys, it's Dr. Seamus here, and today I want to talk about one of the most important informational and insightful lab tests to get to assess the internal state of the gut and the landscape of the gut microbiome and what can happen in the intestinal tract. And this is so important because we know today that inflammation is at the root cause of chronic disease. And so if we can unveil why there's inflammation in the body and in the gut, we can tackle issues at their root cause so they, that they don't have widespread issues elsewhere in the body. And so this test takes a look at if there are high levels of candida and yeast and fungus in the gut, if there are parasites present, different inflammatory markers, it can give us insights into if there's SIBO, small intestine bacterial overgrowth, dysbiosis, um, inflammatory bowel diseases like ulcerative, ulcerative colitis and Crohn's, irritable bowel syndrome like constipation and diarrhea. And this is so important to assess because a lot of gut issues can then create issues elsewhere in the body. And this can manifest in the form of migraines and headaches chronic fatigue syndrome, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, skin issues, moodiness and irritability, hormonal issues, and really just a plethora of autoimmune issues. So let's go ahead and dive in and take a deeper look into this test and what it can unveil about the state of the gut microbiome. All right, guys, so let's jump in a little more in depth and take a look at a sample report of this test from Genova Diagnostics. This is a GI effects comprehensive profile. So we're gonna see all of what this test entails. And right off the bat here, we see a results overview and we look at deep digestion, inflammation, and the gut microbiome. And we see these color coordinated little graphics here. And over here we can see the red corresponds to a high need for support. So there are, as far as the infections, dysbiosis and inflammation in this patient, that there's a high need of support there. And we can scroll down and see exactly what's going on. So a couple inflammatory mediators in the body here are elevated, the calprotectin and the eosinophil protein X. With the dysbiosis, we have some high bacteria and yeast and some parasitic infections as far as uh, the infection category there. And then it gives a therapeutic support option. Uh, this is helpful to the practitioner to figure out some of the things that may be beneficial to bring those numbers down and balance out those um, categories in the body there. So like L-glutamine and turmeric, for instance, would help with the inflammation. Antimicrobial herbal therapy could help bring down so, some of those parasitic infections that are present in the gut. Um, now this shows a healthy cohort. This is where we ideally want to be. Now this patient has some potential for microbiome overgrowth and that's where some of these come into play to implement these to again, bring down some of these scores so there isn't as much of a high need of support. We can start to balance that out. And then we come down and we see these different zones here. Now this patient is in zone three and we can come over here and take a look. Higher inflammation compared to some of the other zones as well as higher rates of pathogenic infection. So it gives a little description as to what is going on in each zone. And let's scroll down a little more. And then we get to this area, which can really further break down um, those different categories a little more in depth. So here we have uh, digestion and absorption. And in this whole category, we see that the pancreatic elastase is low. So we see the patient's result here, they're at 158, and we see with the reference range, ideally we would be over 200. So they're in this yellow range, it's a little bit low, we would wanna buff that up. Uh, as we come down to inflammation and immunology, as we saw earlier, the calprotectin and the eosinophil protein X were high, that's inflammation markers. Uh, so that's in the red zone here. And then we get the gut microbiome and metabolites, that looks like it checks out pretty well for this patient. And then we come down here to the gastrointestinal microbiome, and we can see the different genus and species of bacteria and whether or not they're high, low, or in normal range. And we can see the little H here for high, here's low. Uh, we'll keep scrolling down. We see E. coli in this patient is high. It's all the way in the red here. It really breaks it down, genus and species of each bacteria. They also do a culture on this test, and so with bacteria and candida, and we can see that this patient has Klebsiella and candida and yeast being potential pathogens. 
I'll scroll down. Here we have parasitology, taking a look at the different parasites that may or may not be present. And in the protozoa here, we see uh, blastocystis and dientamoeba are both present parasites in this patient's stool sample. All right, a little more with parasitology there. Let's come down to this area. Now this is taking a look at mycology and some of the candida and yeast that is present and some of the natural agents. So to combat a lot of the candida and exit yeast that's present, berberine, caprylic acid can be great. Caprylic acid is actually a component of coconut oil, medium chain triglyceride. It's a potent antimicrobial and it's great for getting rid of excessive candida. Garlic, and you can see some of the different natural options that can help with that. Then we come down here and we see bacteria. So in order to take care of some of that Klebsiella bacteria that was present, berberine, oregano, plant tannins can be great options that have decent inhibition to get rid of the extra bacteria present there. So guys, this takes care of walking through the GI effects comprehensive profile. It's an incredible test to take a look at really what's going on in the gut microbiome and how that can have such issues and in implications for other areas of the body, including migraine headaches, candida issues, and uh, bacterial vaginosis, yeast infections even on the skin, um, contributing also to fibromyalgia, chronic fatigue syndrome, um, just neurological manifestations. So it's so important to take a look at the gut and what is going on internally and that provides me as a practitioner with more information and more insight and more objective assessments as to how to put forth a therapeutic program to best benefit the patient. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this video on breaking down the GI effects comprehensive profile by Genova Diagnostics. This GI effects comprehensive profile is one of my favorite tests to order for patients to get a better understanding of how their digestive tract is functioning. If you are interested in more information, head over to my website at drshamus.com. Under the form section, there's an application you can fill out and you can email back to me. And I'd be happy to get on a phone call with you to discuss if this could be a beneficial option for you. I work with patients all over the country through telehealth and would love to help aid you in taking your health to the next level.